Hello, families of new coming sixth graders. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about the transition from elementary school to middle school. This uh, transition, I'm going to talk to you about three parts. For part one, what can you and your child expect? Uh, part two, how can uh, the, you, the parent, help your child? And part three, uh, what can you and your child do together to make a better experience for you? Here we go. So first, what can you expect? Um, the transition from elementary school to middle school is a very big transition. There's a lot of changes that happen all at once, and it's it's normal for your child to be nervous about starting middle school. It's normal for your child to not know what to do, um, at least in the first couple of weeks of school. Uh, that's normal. Um, but some of the changes, first off, instead of having one teacher um, and 30 students that your child goes to school with for, this, for the full year, uh, your child would be exposed to at least six different teachers uh, with uh, trimesters and some classes are just one trimester long. Your child can actually have probably upwards of eight or nine different teachers in a school year. Um, they're going to see hundreds of different students in their classes. They're not going to be going with the same 30 kids to the same six classes. Uh, each teacher has different expectations for behavior, for work, for turning in work, for tests. There's all sorts of uh, lots of things your child's going to have to learn, uh, and it's times six instead of times one. Uh, it's normal for you and your child to be nervous about starting middle school. It's normal. Uh, let's see, students may need help organizing their materials and using a planner. Um, in my experience, about 10 to 20 percent of students are actually pretty good at organizing their materials when they come to middle school, and 80 to 90 percent of students are not very good at it, and they need their parents' help. Um, that it's really good to use a planner. Very, very few kids use a planner of any kind, and so they lose track of when assignments are due or when tests are coming up. Uh, so your help with them in keeping a planner, keeping their binder organized is really helpful. Um, and then also down at the bottom here, we see students often experience changes in friendships and middle school is an extremely social situation for them. Like I said, in elementary school, they're, they're going to school with the same 30 kids for the whole school year, but um, in middle school, they're getting a lot of transitions with passing periods, and they get to see a lot of other students, especially at lunchtime, uh, before school and after school. And so they're going to have new and different friendships as well. How can you help your student? Uh, there's a lot that you can do. Uh, the more that you are involved in your child's education, the more the, the better that your child will do in school. Uh, show the importance of education. Uh, let them know that every assignment is important and they should do every assignment. Uh, talk to your child every day about what they did. And I would ask about specifics. Don't just say, how was your day? And your child says, it was fine. And then you move on with your the rest of your evening. Actually ask them about specific things. Um, it's really good for your child to have their own desk to work at at home, uh, their own space uh, and a specific time. Uh, it's good to be in, in a habit of studying at home. So instead of just kind of studying every once in a while, actually saying, when you get home from four to five, you should study every day, something like that. Um, encourage your child to read. I actually think reading is the most important skill a kid can be working on through middle school. And a lot of our students come from elementary school needing to improve their reading scores. So um, if you encourage them to read a book at home, it really helps. Uh, go to you as your parent can come to the different events, back to school night, open houses, uh, parent teaching conferences. The more you attend those uh, events, the more your child knows that you view education as important. Um, help your child to be their own advocate. This is difficult. Uh, this is a difficult thing to do because um, students have to learn to advocate for themselves. This is, this is, it's not as important in sixth grade because we understand that students haven't really learned that skill yet, but if they haven't learned it by the time they get to high school, then in, they can have challenges. So it's good for you to be um, 
involved in some of the very specifics of their day-to-day -day work. But as they get older and go into seventh grade and go into eighth grade, they should be learning on their own how to uh, keep track of their assignments and how to ask the teacher questions. But definitely ask teachers questions on your own if your child is not. Um, we, we need to know if there's things that's important. And if your child is shy and doesn't want to reach out to the teacher, then the parent should definitely be doing that. Okay, what can you do together? Sign up for the summer reading program at your local library. Uh, read books together. Come to Wolfpack Days in August. I highly recommend that for a new sixth grader. The building is a little confusing to get around in. And honestly, on that day in August, the sixth graders can wander through the whole school. It's really helpful for them to, under, to, to get to see how it kind of laid out instead of doing that on the very first day of school when they're very, very nervous. Um, go over homework each night. Uh, from my experience, uh, some teachers don't assign specific homework or not very much homework, but they assign classwork. And if your child doesn't finish the classwork, it becomes homework. And so sometimes your kid will say, no, we didn't have any homework. But what really happened is that they had classwork and they didn't finish their classwork. And so they really do have homework sometimes. So uh, check the grade book to see if there's missing assignments um, and then ask your child about those missing assignments. So research, research shows that when parents are involved, students have higher grades. Students have better attendance, better motivation, better self-esteem. Uh, I actually think parental involvement is the biggest factor in student success. Teachers are important, but parents are more important in the education of their child. Um, so you can see the list here of all the things that are better when students have parents that are involved. Uh, one other thing besides academics, um, Risden has after school activities. Uh, there's a lot of clubs, there's sports, there's the play, there's lots of things that your child can get involved in. And I would encourage your child to get into, involved in any of those that they can. There are a couple of sports that are not cut, like wrestling and track. So even if your uh, child is not the best at, say, football or basketball, uh, they can still make some of those other sports that they don't get cut from. Uh, and there's also things for parents, the PTA, uh, attending the events after school, things like that. You can volunteer in classrooms, but you should be checking uh, teacher websites and teacher and the uh, grade book as much as possible so you know how well your child is doing. And that's it for now. Thank you very much.